how can you practice in everyday living, in, in every, uh, all the th commonplace things that you do day by day and uh, moment by moment, how can you, in those situations, come more alive? That is what spiritual practice means. That is our task today. Uh, and that means contemplative living. So actually, what uh, spiritual practice uh, for everyday living means is a contemplative life. And uh, there we have to look very carefully at that term, contemplation, because uh, it's, it's often misunderstood. Uh, it's often thought of as, uh, well, there's the active life in which all of us are engaged most of the time, and there are the contemplatives, and those are the ones that go uh, to the depths of their cave and, and nobody sees them or something like that. Well, uh, the very term contemplative should alert us that we are really about something else here. Uh, because uh, it comes from the Latin word contemplatio and uh, it has three parts. Uh, the first part is uh, this con or cum in Latin. If, if anyone who has ever had Latin classes knows uh, that's one of the first words you learn. Cum means with. Uh, so we are talking about something that is with or together, something that belongs together. And then the last uh, part of the word, the atio, means an activity that uh, is repeated, a repeated activity. Uh, contemplation is, is something that puts something together over and over again. And what is it that is being put together? That is suggested to us by the little central part of this word, the T-E-M-P, the temp or temple. Uh, and immediately we think of a temple, and rightly so. But originally, uh, Con, con, this little temp is a very old word and goes all the way back to Sanskrit and orig at the very beginning meant making a notch, like when you make a notch in a piece of wood. Um, and what happens when you make a notch? You can start counting. Uh, say you make a notch, uh, Every time the sun rises, you begin to count how many days you have been on this island uh, if you are stranded on, on an island. Or uh, you make two notches, then you can measure. So you can count and measure. Uh, two notches give you a little measuring rod, and you can measure how, many, uh, how long the fish was that you caught uh, uh, in contrast to the one that got away. Uh, and when you make notches in the side of your boat, you can count how many fishes you caught, and so forth. So you count and measure. And this temp, this syllable temp that becomes so important in the word contemplation, means measuring. Uh, we have it in our English words, tempo, which is the measure for speed, and we have it in a temperature, which is the measure of uh, heat and cold. Um, and t we have it in the word temple, temple, or template, which is the measure in which a bricklayer lays the bricks or the tiles. Uh, but temple uh, is the word that's most closely connected with contemplation. And a temple was originally not a building with columns. Um, that's the first thing that comes to our mind when we hear temple. But a temple wasn't even anything on the earth. A templum was something in the skies. It was a, a measured out area in the skies to which you looked up. And you saw there this perfect order because uh, the skies move in perfect order. Um, 
And before there was smog and before there were so many buildings uh, and so many electric lights that uh, lit up the night, people had much more opportunity to look up to the stars and they saw how wonderfully per in perfect order they always repeated their uh, the ways and the planets uh, followed the perfect order and the fixed stars stayed in perfect order. And uh, they were moved by this order and they looked up to it. And th they wanted to measure up to it. So there is the vision, the temple starts with the vision to which we want to measure up. And then uh, they pro in order to facilitate that process, of measuring up, they projected uh, the measured order of the skies onto the earth. And so the most ancient temples that we know are these stone circles and uh, just set up stones uh, that refer to the stars. Uh, we've all seen pictures of Stonehenge, for instance. Uh, these enormous blocks that they move there for great distances with very simple means to set them up to uh, arrange something really firm that cannot be moved, that will not be moved. And the way these stone blocks are related to one another uh, makes them into a big star dial. Uh, at, at the first day of spring, for instance, or at equinox or so, a star will rise just exactly in the crack between two of these rocks as they are set up. Uh, or a big sundial where the shadow falls. These, they are always related to the skies, the original temples. And then later on, uh, they will build a house and uh, a little building in the midst there and so forth. And that's what we then call the temple. And it will be sacred space and all that. But that comes much, uh, much later. The original idea of contemplation is to put together the order above the, to which we look up uh, uh, with uh, the... Uh, with what we do below, that, uh, to bring the order that we see up there, to bring the vision down to earth. And so contained in the word contemplation is the very idea of putting together, that's the cum, uh, over and over again, the vision and the action. And therefore, it's not really correct to say contemplation and action. Uh, contemplation contains action. Uh, without co action, contemplation is just looking up to the stars, keeping your eyes up, looking at the vision, and doing nothing about it. Uh, it's n no better than action without vision, where you're running around like a chicken without a head. Uh, the contemplation is the putting together of the vision and the action over and over again. And a contemplative life does that and does it uh, in everyday living. Uh, and so uh, we want to look at the various ways in which in our everyday living we can put together the vision and the action in which we can again and again uh, find the vision, remind ourselves of the vision, whatever the vision will be for us, the vision that gives meaning to the action.